All right, guys, welcome to the big kids class. For those that are not used to being here, we like to have fun, we like to have treats. So it's something to look forward to as a, a young adult. Um, so I have a presentation that, that I prepared and um, just so before we pray, I just wanted to give you guys a reason why we're doing this and it's because uh, life is a lot to handle if you look at it in the, the big form. So Rob wanted to have these, these classes, split up classes so that you can, we can break it down to like guys things and then girls things that they're having in the next class. And me, Jesse and Robert, we got together and we were thinking about what we should do. And Robert said we should do something that is impact my life, his life and Jesse's life. And maybe somebody else is going through that. And I know that for sure somebody else is going through my problem. And before we start, let's go ahead and bow our heads and pray. Mm -hmm. All right, so as you can see, I created a PowerPoint for Ooh. you folks. Uh, life's perspective, we need to change. Um, one of my problems that I, I'm still struggling. So trust me, I'm the last person I'm the last person that uh, should be preaching about it, but I'm more knowledgeable on it. So yeah, so as we go on life perspective, I just want to go ahead and what are you doing? So what are you doing with your life right now? What are you doing with your life? Me? Oh, yeah. Uh, working, just tr trying to stay out of trouble and trying to do Let's what start. God is, you know, put, putting me through and whatever. Josiah? What are you doing with your life? Making it better. Working and continuing on to something bigger. Alright. Robert's the oldest one in the group. Yeah. What are you doing with your life, bro? Hmm. What am I doing? Well, I'm definitely trying to survive. I'm trying to get a house, trying to be self sufficient. But I'm trying, definitely trying to do, figure out what I was made to do. So and I think I'm getting there. And I last one, is. David. Me, just work, just working, working. And why not, young blood, Bradley? What are you Ooh. doing with your life right now? <laughs> uh, well, during summer right now, I'm working, and when summer's over, I go to school. Okay. So. One of the things that I'm doing is I've been through a, a lot recently. It's uh, work-wise, big changes in my life and positive changes. It can be positive changes. I feel like the more time I, I was missing, I used that as an excuse. And now that I have more time, I have no excuse, but I didn't better myself. Uh, one of the things I've been dealing with is uh, life itself. It's uh, pretty short when you look at it. When you're young, you're like, oh man, I'm only 15, oh, I'm only 13, before you know it, you're 25, before you know it, you're 30. Right, Robert? 29. <laughs> 29. <laughs> but yeah, it, it comes fast, and once you hit that bump of 25, I feel like it comes by faster and faster and faster. So, mark my words, <laughs> it comes by fast. So life is too short. Let's break it down. How short is life? So there's 24 hours in a day times 365 days, that is 8,784 hours. Average male lifespan in the expectancy is, in the U.S. is 78. Uh, other places like Canada is 82. So it's not, it's not much of a difference. So if you do 78 and you do the 78 times the 8,784 hours, you get 6,000, 600,085 and 152 hours. So that's breaking down to your life in a nutshell. Super short. When it comes down to it, life is really short. How much time have you wasted? So go ahead. Somebody pull out a calculator. David, pull out your calculator. Uh, Jesse, you're first. How old are you? Just ask David to pull out a calculator. No, how old are you? Oh, <clears throat> 24. 24 times 8784. I got 193. Uh -huh. 100. 193? 193. That's yours, right? Yeah, that's mine. What about 24 for Jesse? 210. 210. Damn. 
メイトに顔で言えたらいいで<笑><笑><笑><笑><笑><笑><笑> 166. So, how much of that time? How much of the time did you put aside for God? Not much, because I can speak for myself.、Uh, maybe when I come to church, I'm fully focused on God. Outside of church,、uh, recently I started reading my Bible, but not that much beforehand. And what I'm trying to get to is、uh, you guys are made for so much more. So much more that time is too short, and you wasting it, me wasting it on games, on our phones, on social media, YouTube, stuff like that. It's, it's precious. It's the most valuable thing you have, and you can never get back. So once the devil steals it, that's it. There goes by your time. You have a job to do while you're on this earth. Who believes that? You have a job to do here. Alma, you believe it? Or you, you think you're, you're passing the time? Nathan, do you believe you have a job to do here on earth? Yes. Yeah? yeah? Do you know your job? No. Okay. What about you guys? You guys believe you have something to do here? Yeah? I hope so. We all have a purpose. <laughs> the thing is,、uh, a, lot of people get, uh, a lot of people get confused or either disoriented with life itself. And they get off track and they lose that concept that, unfortunately, yeah, school is good and work is good and all this stuff is good, but the bigger picture is you're here for a reason. And God's the one that's going to show you that reason. So, how do, you know, how do you know if you're on the right track? Here's some questions What am I doing with my life? So, think about it. When I read these out, think about it. Honestly, answer to yourself. Don't answer out loud because most of you are going to lie about it. So, go ahead and answer to yourself and just see if you're on the right track. What am I doing with my life? How much time out of the day is de dedicated to God? Am I growing in my faith? Am I, doing, am I doing things that help my faith grow? Do I have too many things to do? Some people get sidetracked, it's like, oh, once you get baptized, I want to do this, I want to do this, I want to do this, I want to do this. And at the end, It's, you become like, oh, it's just work, 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 and you don't focus on growth. That's the most important thing. Do you have many things to do? Are you better than you, your past? Are you better than your past? Who can answer for right now? Are you better than your past? I'm a lot better than my past, that's for sure. Now, let's bring the next step. Are you better than last year? Can you look at last year? Did you grow more than last year? Faith and faith wise? I grew a little bit, so I'll take that as a win. I grew a little bit.、Uh, let's take another step. Are you better than the beginning of the year? Everybody has all those,、uh, what's it called? New, New Year's resolutions. And you guys make, oh, I'm going to lose 10 pounds. It never happens. But a lot of people make like, reli、uh, religious、uh, resolutions. And that is, oh, I'm going to become better. I'm going to read the Bible more. Who made resolutions like that? I made resolutions. And I, when I look at myself, I mean, when I look at my life from the beginning of the year, I notice I failed big time. So, are you better than the beginning of the year? So, answer to yourself yes or no. And then, let's bring it up another step. Are you better than last week? Did you guys fall last week? Because I think I fell last week. I'm not better than last, last week, that's for sure. And you can keep it going from are you better than two days, three days, or even yesterday. You have to look at life at this perspective. It's too short to waste. 
each day counts. Make sure that you you're living a life that's faithful to God each day that comes. So each day should be a step forward, a step forward, a step forward. That's a perfect life, to be honest. Is it impossible? Yeah, close. We're human. It's not going to happen. But if you break it down to yourself like that, in a perspective that you can realize how short life is, then you'll probably take it a little bit more seriously. Who knows this guy? Nobody knows him? Just a few. <laughs> Josiah knows him. Robert knows him. Who else knows him? David? David? No? Billy Graham. A famous pastor. Converted pretty much nations. Converted nation. He's like he was a big guy. Um uh, believed it in what he said, lived what he said, and uh, unfortunately he passed away. But he's with our, our Lord and Savior. He was a great guy. I I heard one of his messages, and one message stuck to me a lot. Who who believes when you hold a baby? Let's say a close a close family relative has a baby your brother, your cousin, whatever, and you hold it and it's like goo goo gaga. It's the cutest thing in the world, right? Am I wrong? No. no. It's the cutest thing in the world. Now he said, look at it at a, a Christian aspect. You start out as a, a new Christian and you start out the word, you start off with drinking milk and you, you're goo goo gaga. Alright? You're a baby. Now look at it 30 years later, or 24 years later, and you still say Goo Goo Gaga. Is that cute? No. Then you look like that big old man over there, and you look disgusting. <laughs> so you say, what if you're still saying Goo Goo Gaga when you're 30, when you're 40, you're 50, and so on, and you're not growing in the faith? It's not pleasing to the eye. You're not impressing anybody. And God's definitely not impressed. Because you're not even trying. How do you do this? How do you grow? How do you take that step? First of all, read the Word. Started reading the Word, but it's more than reading the Word. If you talk to Samuel, if you talk to Samuel, he'll tell you exactly like read a certain section of it like two or three verses read two or three verses so once you read a verse dissect it what is it talking about how can you apply and implement it into your life how can you share this word how can you soak it up just don't read the Bible front to back and be like hey I read the Bible I'm good it doesn't work like that you have to implement it in your life. You have to feel it. You have to live it. Let it grow. Use it as a seed. Next, prayer. Communication with God. Communication with Jesus. That's the next step. How can you say, oh yeah, I read the word, but I don't talk to God. He knows I'm good. He knows my heart. No, he wants to hear it, man. He wants to you to cry out to him. He wants to hear the good things, the bad things, the struggles. He wants to hear the praises. And then, of course, once you add all that up, it's the relationship that counts. You have to build a relationship with them. How do you build a relationship with somebody? It's like, I don't talk to Nathan. You think I have a good relationship with him? Nah. <laughs> exactly. So you have to talk to, uh, to talk to God, read His Word because that's exactly how He's gonna tell you stuff too, and then build a relationship with Him. All right, just wrapping up. Um, this is one of the one of the things that I uh, quotes that I found and I really like. Who knows Martin Luther King Jr. 
I hope for everybody <laughs> that did. They teach in school, and he was a great guy. He was a good. He was a good pastor. He was a good pastor, and he led. He led a movement, not out of uh, hate or anything, out of love for a change in America. And yeah, he, he made it definitely a dent in our history. Um, this is one of the things that he says. If you can't fly, then run. If you can't run, then walk. If you can't walk, then crawl. But whatever you do, you have to keep moving forward. You can use that as your Christian walk. It's like if you can't do anything, at least, at least crawl. Move forward each day. Because believe it or not, believe it or not, life is short. And it says in the Bible itself, you're not guaranteed tomorrow. You have to focus on your life right now. When do you change? Today. Right now. You have to change. I wish it was that simple, but if you have that attitude, you will change. Because I can ask you this right now. If you only had an hour to live, would you make it into heaven right now? All right, thank you guys. I'm going to ask you guys just a few questions. But Josh, so Josh talked about purpose and whether you guys uh, are living on purpose. Uh, let me ask you a question. Uh, who do you think, who do you think in the world right now, famous or not, somebody you know, who do you think is actually living a life full of purpose? Can you name somebody? living a life full of purpose. Brian Houston. All right. Let me get a marker that works. All right. Uh, okay. So Jesse said Brian Houston. Uh, if you don't know who that is, that's a pastor of a big church called Hillsong Church and they're leading a huge movement you know leading people to Jesus everywhere all over the world huge so somebody living their life with purpose he's an example Jesse anybody else Drake I think he's living his purpose no. everybody does that whether he is or not but at least we think he is because he's kind of reached the pinnacle of music you know, so maybe Drake, I don't know. <clears throat> Who else? Any other thoughts? What about that famous soccer player? Uh... Messi. What's his name? Messi. What is it? Messi. Messi? All right. Do you think he's living his purpose? Do you think he was doing what he's designed to do? I would think so. Yeah. Nobody's that good. I mean, to have that kind of skill and to be working at McDonald's, like, hey, man, what are you doing? <laughs> Get out there and play soccer. That, you know? Um, all right, so what else? Any, what other people can we think of that are, you think they're doing what they've been designed to do? Anybody else? What about like the owner of uh, Apple Computer? Or, well, he passed away actually. But. Well, what about that owner of In-N-Out? In-N-Out, all right. Um. Huge chain. All right, actually the daughter owns it now. But, uh, you know, the guy who started it, yeah, that's a good burger. Somebody who can make that burger, shoot. And he's, you know, maybe he was running a tree company instead. David makes that burger. Used to. Used to. To have that skill and not share it with the world? Man. All right, so who's living their purpose? And, I, I, and the idea is that, you know, we look up to people, we th you know, who we think are living their purpose, and most of who we mention are, Famous, people well-known, maybe wealthy. And we think that's, that's purpose. But I, I wonder if that's not really rich, famous, attractive. You know, if those aren't really the characteristics of everyone who's living their purpose. And um, what purpose, really purpose, I was trying to define it all week. What, what is purpose? What does that mean? Josh, any thoughts? Purpose? What, what is purpose? Purpose, is, I believe it's um, what you're made, 
made to do. All right. Doing. Anybody else? <coughs> what is purpose? Doing what you were made to do. We know that, what is Macy? Is that his name? Messi. Messi. We know he was made to play soccer. No doubt. All right, David Beckham, soccer. He's trying to be an actor, but we'll see. Um, you know, we think of these guys who have that skill and have that gift, and it's like that's definitely what you were made to do. But what's hard is when we think of ourselves and say, well, I'm not good at soccer, I can't rap. Uh, may not be that attractive. Uh, you know, I don't have a lot of money. What the heck am I here for? Uh, and I think that's the issue where we all get stuck. Um, and you're not alone in that. Josh just mentioned that he's in the same boat, trying to figure that out. Same for me. I mean, who doesn't want to figure that out? Uh, Nathan, how old are you? Thirteen. Thirteen. And he's trying to figure it out. I've been working on it since I was thirteen. I'm barely getting there. So we're hoping that we can all get there a little quicker. Don't wait till the end of your life. Oh, that's what my purpose was. I just wasted 500,000 hours, you know? <laughs> Why not start now? Because a lot, I think a lot of the time what Josh is saying, that we live life with no direction. It's like, well, what the heck am I doing? I'm just working, sleeping, working, sleeping, eating, sleeping. What, what, really, is my, what really is my goal? What really is my purpose? And um, I think what Josh was leading up to is that, uh, you know, what really is the most important thing in life? What were you, what were you made for? And, and I think we asked everybody, do you guys have any idea what, what you think your purpose might be? Jesse? Be a professional tree climber. Be a professional tree climber. <laughs> he's got a long ways to go, but he's getting there. <laughs> he's got potential. Anybody else think they know what their purpose is? We look at skills, talents, passions. You know, some of those things may give you an idea. Anybody, what are you good at? Anybody, what do you, I forgot your name already. Ellie Sayo, what do you think you're good at? Fortnite? <laughs> yeah, all right. That's all right. What, uh, if you could do anything, what would it be? Any, anything to give you, to get you fired up? Some people is building cars. Steve, it's drawing on freeways. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. He doesn't do that. But that's what our goal is, purpose. What about you? If there was anything you could do, I love it. Oh no! I'll probably go like. Um, you ever watch uh, Deadliest Catch where they go out and like go mm -hmm. crab, crab? Like, really? Yeah. yeah I would right. do, do that. That's fun. Yeah. Yeah, I don't have that desire. That's that's unique. I'll probably do that. That's cool. And after that, get my own boat going. Wow. And just sell seas. All right. Yeah, so why don't you do it? I don't know, cause I just work every day. All right. Don't got time to like you know. Okay. Anybody else, Eduardo? Any ideas? If you could do anything, anything, dream job, dream anything, a chef, a chef, uh, nice. nice. We got our next in and out burger right there. <laughs> awesome. All right, chef. Any other dreams, Bradley? If you could do anything, money's not an issue. What would it be? Uh, Football player. Football player. Oh, nice. What's that? that there's Football a guy who's pretty short. He plays. What's his name? Kobe. No. He was uh. Kobe Bryant. Baltimore. From Baltimore. <laughs> I don't know. No, he had a pit bull. <laughs> think he went to jail. Sherman at two million dollars. Oh. Mike Vick. Michael Vick. Michael Vick. Michael Vick. Vick. He. Excellent one. Quarterback. All right. Cool. All right. So we got dreams. All right, the, the issue is that a lot of us won't ever reach them, you know, we're going to be, because we're going to be stuck working and going all these excuses. Like me, I'm 29, and I've been owning a business, working, doing lots of things, and I, well, am I on my purpose? Have you ever took the chance to stop and think about it? And uh, I, I guess we're not going to go into too deep today, but we're just trying to give you an idea that, hey, actually, you guys are no accident. I want to read you a verse, uh, just to piggyback on what Josh has been saying. 
It's found in Ephesians 2.10, and you're welcome to read it if you don't believe me, or even if you just want to see it for yourself, because this verse is awesome. Ephesians 2.10. And if any of you guys have something to say, feel free. All right, here it is, Ephesians 2.10. I'll read it to you. It says, For we are His workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. All right, so he says, For we are His workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works. All right, there's two things in here that I just want you guys to know about yourselves and for me. That one, that... uh, that we are no accident. We are created. Okay? That's a big thing. You have to decide right now, or not decide right now, but think about, am I an accident, or was I? am I here on purpose? I think that's a big thing. It, you know, maybe what they'll teach you, in, uh, or maybe you might get taught in school, is that actually you're, you're a random selection of whatever, you know? You might be just an accident, and you're, uh, you know, make the best of it. Um, anybody know of uh, any famous people that almost got aborted? They were almost killed in abortion? Any famous people? Ever heard of any? Do you think there are any? Me. Justin, <laughs> who? Justin Bieber? His mom would thought about having an abortion, but she didn't. Her family was trying to get her to do it. She was 17 when she was pregnant. She should have. <laughs> she didn't do it. Um, Jack Nicholson. I don't know if you know who that is, but he he played. Uh, he was the first Joker. Yeah. Uh, he almost got aborted. Um, Tim Tebow. Uh, his wow. mom almost aborted him. So some people might think maybe I'm an accident because you know I should have been killed. I should have been aborted. But you can see what they've done with their lives. So I think that's the first part is when you read this verse, when I read this verse, I, I was like, what the heck? But if you just put your name in there for a sec, for David is his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works. You know, if you can pop your name in there, because it says we, everybody. You know, if you could put your name for <coughs> Eduardo is God's workmanship. It's like God's craftsmanship. He actually formed and designed him. Created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. So, the second part is that we got a purpose. So, doing what you're made to do, you're created for a reason. And, you know, that reason is something we all have to decide. Like Josh told you, you only got a few, you only got a certain amount of time. 8,874 hours in a year, and you've got, is that right, in a year? Yeah. And you've got 78 years, possibly. We've already wasted uh, 17 of them, 21 of them, 20. 20 of them, 29 of them. Are you living your purpose? And uh, just, I want to, the last thing is that, what if you decide to be the most famous soccer player, own your own business, become the best chef, catch the biggest tuna or crab out there in the sea? You know, all of that, you reach the pinnacle of success. I'm doing the best I can. Do you, is that really what you were made to do is the question. Because like Josh said, every, there's one thing that's for sure is that every one of us is going to die. We're all going to die. 78 years, all right? Okay, let's say 80, because we're eating gluten-free. 80 years, we're all going to die. And then what? Life's just a short span. That We believe that there's actually life after death for everybody. You know, heaven or hell, really. So are you living in, a, in, a, are you living in such a way that changes your eternity? And uh, I think that's the big thing, is who cares if you're the greatest football player? Shoot, when you die after that, if, if eternity is at stake, that's really, the, that's really the most important thing. So, 
for you guys to know, like Josh was really pushing you guys. He's going through something, and I think a lot of it, Jesse's going through it, I'm going through it. Like, what am I really here for? Josh has been working like crazy for years, so have I and Jesse, slaving. But am I slaving for what I was designed to do? And we, I believe, and I think we can all agree that the, what the Bible is telling us is that you're, you're really, there's one thing you were designed to do, and that was to be in relationship with God. That's where it all starts. Because you can get rich, and you can miss that, and then it's all worthless. It's all pointless. Because once you, once you connect with God, everything starts moving. And I've and I experienced that in my life. Um, you know, it's all really wasted, if not, if not that. So... Uh, I, yeah, I don't know if, you know, right now, you guys may not know your purpose. Oh, me? Oh. What? I guess Siri might know. Siri, what is your purpose? I'm here to help. Just ask, what can I say? Pretty and I'll simple. show you what I can do. Alright, she knows. <laughs> we don't. <laughs> Alright, so, I think that if, if you know, Take, take what you can from today, and it was more to encourage you guys that you're, you're no accident. You know, maybe you don't have any idea what to do. Maybe you're not rich. Maybe you're not a great rapper. Maybe you're not, you know, physically capable to play any sport like Tim Tebow and whatever, but you've got it. There's a reason why you're here. You are no accident, even if you're ugly, like most of us here. No, I'm just kidding. There's a reason, and God is that. He's the start to that. And once you get... Connected with God, the one who made you, things start happening. So we're gonna we'll have another talk in about a month, and we'll just kind of talk about it. We're gonna be growing in that, but today was just to get you guys thinking. Is that think about what you're doing, um, Josh? Any thoughts? Yeah, he was fired up because he's he's seeking, seeking his purpose. So you can tell when somebody's on on mission. And we, I, we're, our hope is that all you guys can do that, you know, at whatever state. So just think about that this week. Be praying about it. Ask God, hey, what is, what do you, what do, you, what am I here for? What do you want me to do? And uh, and I think I believe that with Him, you'll start. This whole thing won't be wasted. You'll make it'll be worthwhile. So uh, let's just pray for each other uh, before we head out, <clears throat> because. Uh, yeah, we need it. My goodness. I don't know that any one of us knows what we're here for yet. So, Jesse's got an idea. So, uh, if you wouldn't mind just putting your hand on somebody's shoulder and just pray for the person next to you.